Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here, if you're new, hello, my name is Casper and I'm going away next week. I'm very excited, um, I've, this is the first time that I will be doing this by myself, um, going for a solo trip away, I'm not going out of the country, um, I'm just getting the train to York and then I'm staying there for a few days, so that's very exciting. Um, but I'm autistic. And I also struggle massively with my mental health, so there are a few things that I need to factor in when it comes to planning a trip or, you know, going away. Um, now, obviously some, some of these may seem like common sense, but they're just things to consider. Um, I'm going to go through them and talk about how I factor them in and what I do about them. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking. So. The first item on my list is planning and that means planning everything so the obvious things like hotels transport all of that fun stuff ensuring that you can get to and from the train station if you're using the train you're checking bus timetables rail replacement all of that fun stuff ensuring that you've booked the hotel in the right location um booking any restaurants that you may want to go to um tripadvisor also have lists and lists and lists of recommendations of things to do in that particular area so i definitely recommend checking that out having a look even if you don't book anything just making a list because it's always good to like know in advance and i know particularly for me i do a lot better when i'm kept busy so i do like to plan things ahead i do like to schedule things in and it makes it exciting as well so you have things to look forward to um if you're booking to go to museums they're often a lot cheaper online Sometimes they're free to book. I understand that some museums you can't book and they are just literally rock up and book um, or rock up and buy tickets or just rock up. Um, <laughs> so checking that out, having a look at what's in the area, um, making sure that if you aren't driving that you can get to any of the places that you're going to. Um, so either that be by public transport, walking or a little bit pricey, but taxis. Um, when it comes to hotels, Chains, chain hotels often are more reliable and more consistent with their facilities. But I do understand they are a little bit more pricey. Um, so having a look at what's in your price range. Um, again, weekends and stuff tend to be a little bit more expensive. So seeing what you can fit around your schedule. Um, booking things also, also makes it a lot less stressful when it comes to the actual day. But I also understand that sometimes spontaneity is fun. So having that balance, I guess. Um, the second one is mainly mental health related, and that is knowing where the local a &E is, and if you deem it necessary, having crisis lines of that local area saved in your contacts. Um, the joy of the NHS is that no matter where you are in the country, you can rock up to any a &E, any crisis centre, any place of safety, wherever it is, as long as it is NHS, you can turn up and be like, yo, I need help and they will give you help regardless of whether or not you live in the area um so crisis care they will give you regardless it's only really when it comes to like long-term support like therapies and stuff that you do have to live in that catchment area um but that's just because of funding and things like that um but even if you just explain to them I don't live in this area but I am staying here for a few days and I could really do with some support over the next few days or over the next few hours or however long it is and liaising with them and seeing what they can offer you there's no harm in asking um, but knowing what they have in the area can be really helpful because I'm sure that's the last thing you want to be searching up when you're in a mental health crisis I will link below um, the NHS website where you put in the postcode and it will give you a list of crisis lines and places of safety for that local area um but you obviously have samaritans and papyrus um all of those other charities that are accessible regardless of where you are in the country um i understand that some places don't have crisis lines and some places don't have places of safety um but again the nhs 111 will help you out regardless and if you feel unable to keep yourself safe then a e on 999 if you do take medication, whether it be for mental health stuff or physical health or whatever it may be, ensuring that you have enough medication to last you for your stay 
and ensuring that you take it with you. Some places, if you do forget your medication, you can phone 111 and get them to send over to pretty much any pharmacy, I think, an emergency supply of medication and that emergency supply, and I know this because I've done this, um, that emergency supply is usually three to five days worth. Um, and for most trips that will be enough, but it's always good to just make sure that you have enough. For me, I know that I need to order another set of meds before I go away. I also only take what I need because then I don't need to worry about accidentally leaving the rest <laughs> in the hotel when I come back home. Um, and I feel that I feel like a lot safer with just what I need rather than unnecessarily taking more than I need, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you have all of them with you if you take multiple, counting them up before you go, put them in a bag, put them in a zip a zipped pocket preferably, just in case anything falls out and things like that, um, but that's all. Uh, I would argue that the next one is the most important and that is going slow, so doing things at your own pace, doing what you want rather than what you feel that you need to do. Um, for example, when we as a family, my family go to Cornwall, my parents in particular often feel that because we've spent six, seven hours travelling here, that we need to do all of these things and that we need to make the most of the time here and do this and this and this and we often focus so much on what we need to do and what we feel that we need to do that it often sucks the enjoyment out of things because that's what we're focused on we're not focused on enjoying the moment and enjoying the activity that we're doing we're focusing on all of the other things that we need to do next or the fact that we need to do this thing because it's like the tourist thing or because we've spent so much money on this thing that we need to do it and it makes it makes things a lot more stressful rather than just doing what you want to do at your own pace and in your own time which is why i love going away on your own so much because you don't have the societal pressures of what other people want to do as well if that makes sense um you can just do what you want so whether that be absolutely everything in one day and then taking the next day to just rest or spreading things out evenly you know, ensuring that you have enough to keep you busy, but also not overworking yourself because it is meant to be a holiday and not a work. Um, but just doing what you want to do. You know, that's often where you find the most enjoyment and you will end up feeling like if you do that, then you will end up feeling like the whole holiday was. Uh, to finish off with and to follow on, uh, the last one is it's okay if you feel like you need to leave early or if you do need to leave early for whatever reason. Um, if you get in the train, it's often the same money, sometimes cheaper, sometimes a little bit more expensive to just get an open return rather than a fixed return. Um, and that means that you can, you have a month to return. You can, there are usually are a few restrictions on what time trains you can get, but it's a lot more relaxed than you have to get this train on this particular day. And even if you don't, even if you do return when you plan to return, just, I know particularly for me, knowing that I have the option to come home early releases a lot of pressure off of myself and feeling like I, I need to stay for this amount of time. And the way that I look at it, particularly when you've got non-refundable things like hotels, you've paid for it regardless of whether you stay the whole time. And I know some people may not like the way of looking at that like that, but it's no different if you stay there then if you come home because regardless you've paid for it you've booked it whether or not you're there doesn't really matter so what's the difference <laughs> if that makes any sense um i just find that it makes things a lot more relaxed and calms me down a lot more because again even if i don't come home early i still have the option and knowing that it's okay to come home for whatever reason um because some things you know some, some things things crop up, you know, whether that be external issues or whether that be an internal issue, regardless of what it is, it's okay. You know, you don't have to stay for the length of time that you planned just because you said or just because you booked. Anyway, I'm talking in circles now. I'm going to finish it up here. So that was everything. If you have anything else to add, please put them down in the comments below. As usual, I will leave any useful links or 
any crisis lines that I feel are useful in the description below. Uh, if you'd like to see a sort of vlog type video for that, for me going away next week, then I will definitely do that. Please let me know. Uh, I will definitely post photos and things and stuff on my Instagram at creating.casper. So definitely check me out there if you haven't already. Um, sorry about not posting a video last week, but I was very ill. So <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you guys have an enjoyable, well, it's half term for us now. So hope you guys have an enjoyable week and stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Over and out.